Good afternoon. I'm John Jackson, Chairman of the College's Anniversary Committee, and it's my great pleasure to serve as Master of Ceremonies for an event that's been planned for 140 years. <laughs> Our audience today is filled with students, faculty, staff, friends, and the supporters of college, and a rather remarkable group of invited guests, which we'll come to in a bit. Additionally, we are live streaming the ceremony to our friends and potentially over 5,000 alumni around the world. We'd like to kick off the celebration with the singing of the national anthem. Would you please rise? Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the streaming and the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled Please be seated. I'd like to thank uh, Navy Band Northeast uh, for the music they provided as we came in. A combo will be entertaining us later in the uh, program. And I thank MU3 Sherry Devine. I've never heard that done better, so uh, let's hear it for her. I'd now like to turn the podium over to the 59th president of the Naval War College, Rear Admiral Darrell Walker. Wow, good afternoon. How's everybody doing today? Oh, fantastic. I thought the uh, change of command was hard. This is hard. No, uh, honestly, it's a true honor and a pleasure to be here uh, with you all this afternoon. Welcome everyone to the Naval War College, the home of thought since 1884. I would particularly like to welcome some of our distinguished guests uh, and, and, and to start off, Senate, uh, excuse me, Senate and Armed Service Committee Chairman, Senator Jack Reed. Sir, please stand. <laughs> Senate Budget Committee Chair, Senator Sheldon Whitehouse. Sir, good to see you again. Please stand. First Congressional District Congressman Gabe Amo. Sir, please stand. City of Newport, Mayor Zai Kim, oh gosh, I apologize. Kim C. Kamsi Voravong, my apologies, sir. First time I've had to pronounce your name, Kamsi Voravong, and my team told me how to pronounce it. Thank you all for being here, and uh, more importantly, for your service to our community, service, and to our nation. I do want to recognize our uh, CNO Distinguished Fellows, Admiral Barrera, Admiral Verma, and Admiral Sanis for their continued service to the college. Now we are conducting the third of the uh, past president's forum this week, and we are so pleased to have four of our uh, men and women who have served as the president of this great institution. I will have more to say about them in a few minutes, but let me simply acknowledge them for their and them and their spouses for their time, and ask them to stand when called. Vice Admiral John Christensen and his wife Teresa. Vice Admiral Shoshana Chatfield and her husband David, and now actually, actually in Europe uh, via Zoom. I'm not sure if we can pull their, their faces up, but we will welcome them. <laughs> Maybe later. The Navy's newest Vice Admiral, P. 
Pete Garvin and his wife, uh, Cheryl. Thank you for being back here. And then also Rear Admiral Jeff Harley. Uh, his wife, Sydney, was not able to be here today, but thank you, sir, for being here. Welcome back home to you all. Uh, we hope that uh, what, you, what you have seen, you truly like uh, with the place that you have been here at. So, in a while, uh, we do not have the time to mention all the, uh, the guests that are here, distinguished guests here, um, uh, and all the honored guests aboard this uh, afternoon. I do want to recognize Mr. Dan Holloway the third. Chairman and Board of Trustees of the Naval War College Foundation. Dan, please stand. We don't do a lot without the uh, War College Foundation. And then also, the, uh, they are the official sponsor of the 140th celebration, that, the things that you have seen around this college. And then also, uh, retired Captain George Lang, the President and CEO. Thank you all for 55 plus years of partnership with the Naval War College. Thank you, George. And finally, I'm, e I'm also uh, pleased to recognize our provost, uh, Dr. Stephen Mariano, and the provost, Nancy Schreiber, from our sister institution over at the Equidnick Island here, Salve Regina. I did not see Nancy yet. And Stephen. There's Stephen, as you all will. Okay, again, thank you all for taking the time to be here. Uh, there's more to be said, but I hope you enjoy the program. Thank you. Since we're recognizing the many achievements of the college over the past 14 decades, we needed to find a scholar able to tell the War College story in a brief and concise manner. It will come as no surprise to any of you that we turn to Professor Emeritus John Hattendorf, the single most knowledgeable maritime historian in the world. Is that correct, John? That's right. A former naval officer who has been associated with the college since 1969, and he is the namesake of the college's prestigious John B. Hattendorf Center for Maritime Historical Research. He's been given the task of summarizing nearly a century and a half of history in less than 10 minutes. Talk fast, John. Ladies and gentlemen, Professor Emeritus John B. Hattendorf. The Naval War College owes its creation to the vision and persistence of one man, Stephen Bleeker Luce. Some 160 years ago, young Lieutenant Commander Luce was assigned to the U.S. Naval Academy faculty, then located here in Newport during the American Civil War. He realized then that his branch of service was not providing training and education in key professional areas. The Naval Academy had no textbook for seamanship, for example, so Luce wrote it, and it stood as the U.S. Navy's standard for 40 years. As he rose in rank and widened his experience to the command of seven different ships in peace and in war, under sail and under steam, Stephen Luce saw other inadequacies in the Navy's professional preparation uh, for its officers and men. As a commander of a fleet division, he saw there was neither a procedure to exercise naval tactics nor a unit assigned to examine experimental naval ideas, so he created both. At the same time, he saw there was no preparatory training for enlisted recruits, and he established the U.S. Navy's first recruit trainings for enlisted men here on Coasters Island, Harbor Island in 1883. Then when he rose to be Rear Admiral and Commander of the North Atlantic Squadron, then the U.S. Navy's most senior active duty billet, Luce turned to implement a long-standing goal. Since the time of his combat service in the Civil War in the 1860s, he had realized that there was no place in the Navy to study the most important and the central issue for a professional officer in, armed, in the armed forces, the subject of war. His age, like ours, was a time of rapidly changing technology, periods that some are fond of labeling as a revolution in military affairs. Then as now, the main focus of professional life was on technology and science, on metallurgy, on applications of electricity, on the chemistry and physics of weapons and a host of related matters. 
But Luce fully recognized and appreciated the importance of all these matters as fundamental to success in modern warfare. But he saw more clearly than most. Um, <clears throat> sorry that these were only the, the means for success in solving a broader problem that most officers ignored. It was the issue of war itself. As Luce repeatedly pointed out, war is the central issue around which the profession of arms exists, and there was no existing institution where a naval officer could study it. Thus, Stephen Luce persuaded a reluctant Navy Department to establish the Naval War College on the 6th of October, 1884 making the name of the institution into a constant daily reminder to students and faculty as to the purpose and the focus of its work. In creating the college's first faculty and curriculum, Luce established the report, the uh, approach that has been repeatedly renewed, refined, and reaffirmed over more than a century in seeking to understand war in its broadest dimensions. It's a major area of study, but one that few undertake, then or now. And it requires original research and new thinking to understand how wars begin, how wars are fought, how wars end, and how wars can be prevented. The highest aspect of the professional subject involve understanding governmental management, finance, leadership, decision making, logistics, campaign planning, and tactics, international relations and grand strategy. The analytical tools for such a study lay in the approaches with which most naval officers of this time were unfamiliar, the social sciences and politics, history, management, and international law, as well as understanding the roles of other services and their approaches to war. To study the, uh, of these matters, Luce added a new tool for broad analysis, wargaming. Then in its infancy, Luce foresaw the college's game boards could become the key tool that linked the broad analysis of political military issues with the burgeoning developments in current and future naval technologies. So he empowered Lieutenant William McCarty Little to innovate and to develop this area. Luce was not only the founder of the college, but also a key supporter and advocate, as well as a faculty member. In 1901, at the age of 73, the Navy ordered him back to active duty as a Naval War College faculty member, a position he held for a decade. With Luce's concept of the college's focus, the Naval War College began to make a large range of contributions that has earned it a widespread reputation during the 140 years that have followed. The student body gradually widened. The student the college had its first foreign officers from officers from Sweden in 1894 and from Denmark in 1895, presaging by 60 years the wider and more comprehensive international programs we have today. While the courses and seminar discussions established the locus for learning, faculty members went on to make additional significant contributions. Most famously of all the college's contributions, Captain Alfred Thayer Mahan's lectures provided the basis that created for the first time an understanding of naval strategy and a new approach to naval history. Eventually published in book form, Mahan influenced naval thinking around the globe and for decades to come. Captain Charles Stockton published the first attempt to write a code of international law for naval operations and within a decade, it became the focus for international discussions and a basis for the modern law of naval warfare. Meanwhile, the college was making other contributions. Officers here played a key part in creating the country's first contingency plans for war, some of which were used in the Spanish-American War in 1898. Also in the, years of the early years of the 20th century, the Naval War College was the principal engine behind the creation of operational naval doctrine and the innovation of an operational staff to support flag officers at sea. In addition, the college was the wellspring for the long-term movement that eventually led to the creation of a chief of naval operations in 1915 with his shore-based naval staff to advise government leaders in Washington and to give Navy the Navy the professional uniform leadership that it had never had before. For the First World War, Naval War College students and faculty looked critically at the recent naval events 
in Europe and in the light of the arms control limitations treaties began to think innovatively about the future operational uses for submarines, aircraft, and amphibious forces. Continuing through the 1930s, they made significant contributions to the development of War Plan Orange that contributed to thinking during World War II. And while commanding in the Pacific during the war, as document, documented in Admiral Nimitz's Gray Book, he daily used the methodology for supervising multiple and complex military operations they had learned as a student here at the Naval War College, what became later known as the college's textbook, Sound Military Decision. Admiral Raymond Spruance, the victor of the Battle of Midway, returned to the Naval War College for his fourth tour of duty here in 1946 and established the college's direction as it entered the Cold War. During that period, much thought was devoted to the issues of nuclear weapons, logistics, and multinational cooperation. More recently, the college contributed substantially to the thinking around the maritime strategy of the 1980s, the conduct of the Gulf War in 1990 and 91, as it did in helping to create the maritime strategy for the 21st century, and it is currently continuing to make taking a leadership role in strategic thinking today. As faculty, students, and staff here at the college, we are all part of this heritage. It is a heritage that stands as a personal challenge to each and every one of us every day. Both of us, for those of us who have just been here for a term and to those who have been here for decades. As Admiral Luce told our predecessors in 1903, if attendance here will serve in any degree to broaden an officer's views, extend his mental horizon on national and international questions, and give him a just appreciation of the great requirements and extent of, of his profession, this college will not have existed in vain. In short, what I've said is this. What happened then matters now. All of us here today are part of the college's continuing story. Thank you. Nicely done, John. Thank you very much. That was impressive, interesting, and informative. It's now my turn to exercise the old adage that a picture is worth a thousand words and quickly run through some historical images to highlight a few of the places, people, and events over the college's long and distinguished history. With the help of our archive staff, our goal was to generate a few hushed, wow, I didn't know that, comments. We'll start with some places. Built in 1820, the Newport Alms House, an asylum for the poor, operated on Coasters Harbor Island. This stereo card from 1873 shows the building that would become, in 1884, the first home of the Naval War College. Still in use today, the building now called Founders Hall houses our excellent museum. Coasters Harbor Island was ceded to the U.S. government in 1883 by the generous citizens of Newport to enable the establishment of a naval training center and the Naval War College. Shown here is Gate 1, through which many of you probably passed this morning as it looked in 1887. Founders Hall sufficed for the first eight years of the college's existence until a purpose-built building could be constructed. At a cost of $80,000, what we now call Loose Hall was opened in 1892. This photo from 1923 shows Loose Hall, Founders Hall, and a group of Navy recruits spelling out Newport Naval Training Station. Well, yesterday... <laughs> we'll be identifying each person in that picture here pretty soon, so... The one in orange. Well, yeah, yeah, I'm in there somewhere. I don't know. So anyway, as the college expanded its enrollment and mission, additional facilities were constructed. This aerial photo, taken in 1924 by the rigid airship USS Shenandoah, shows the completed addition that is now known as Mahan Hall. I love seeing those old cars in the driveway. By 1936, 
Additional teaching and gaming spaces have been constructed in Pringle Hall, and the complex shown here was the primary college campus for the next 32 years. In 1968, the Chief of Naval Operations directed the expansion of the campus to be able to support a student population of up to 700 students. This photo from 1970 shows the early construction of Spruance Hall and the Spruance Auditorium complex in which we're seated, the first phase of the three-phase building program. Next came Connolly Hall, named for uh, college president number 28, Admiral Richard L. Connolly, and College President Number 37, Vice Admiral Stansfield Turner, is shown checking out the plans for the construction. Ahead of schedule and under budget, the third and final portion of the expansion plan resulted in the completion of Hewitt Hall in 1976. It is named for World War II hero Admiral Henry Kent Hewitt. No additional major construction would occur for more than two decades until the Strategic Maritime Studies Institute was completed in September of 1999. The center was housed in McCarty Little Hall, named after William McCarty Little, the father of naval wargaming. So that's some of the uh, buildings. Let's talk about some of the people. One indication of the value and influence of an institution can be found in the people who have worked there, studied there, or visited and lectured there. For example, founder Stephen B. Luce and the college's second president, Alfred Thayer Mahan, did much to establish the institution we know today, and John did a wonderful job explaining how they brought things about. As he indicated, Admiral Luce returned as an uh, officer to study, uh, to teach here, and that's him right there. So uh, he was here for many, many years and continued his uh, strong connection with the college. This photo shows the class of 1916 gathered on the steps of Luce Hall. President number 14, Rear Admiral Austin Knight is there. The numbers on their hats, I believe were added after the photo was printed. I don't really think they put numbers on their hats in those days, but I can't say for sure. Here we see Admiral William S. Sims, who served as the college president before and after the First World War. In 1921, he received the Pulitzer Prize in Literature for his book, Victory at Sea. Jumping ahead 36 years, we recognize Rear Admiral Alan Shepard, the first American in space and the fifth man to walk on the moon. He is an alumnus of the class of 1957, and he received the Congressional Space Medal of Honor in 1978. If there was any doubt that this stage has been occupied by much more significant figures than me, I'd like to identify the man in black, Johnny Cash, who gave a concert right here on this stage in 1975. And in March of next year, we're gonna relive some of that concert and have some of the Cash family here with us uh, to talk about how that uh, concert came about and uh, maybe play a few songs. So we'll look forward to that. Uh, Johnny Cash came because his nephew, Roy Cash Jr., was a student here at the time. We welcome many famous art, uh, authors, including uh, military thriller writer Tom Clancy, who spoke here in 1986. Computer pioneer, Rear Admiral Grace Hopper, lectured on several occasions. Shown here is a picture of the Admiral and the moth that was found inside a malfunctioning computer documented as the first computer bug in history. <laughs> That's not my joke, they said it, they called it a bug. Secretary of State Henry Kissinger. There we go. Uh, spoke at a black tie event in March of 1978 during the tenure of Naval War College President Number 40 and Medal of Honor recipient Vice Admiral James Bond Stockdale. We have welcomed Supreme Court justices on numerous occasions. Associate Justices Scalia, O'Connor, Breyer, and Sotomayor provided insight into the workings of the nation's highest court. And our students were fascinated by hearing lectures from Nobel Prize laureates Arthur Schwallow and LeMay Gaboe. And in November of uh, 2022, NASA astronaut Sonny Williams lectured about her impending spaceflight aboard the Boeing Starliner. 
As many of you know, this flight was delayed for many years, and she's still in orbit today, waiting to come home. So uh, we'll welcome her when she comes back. And finally, we recognize Rear Admiral John Kirby, U.S. Navy retired. He's a Naval War College alumnus from the class of 2000, and he now serves as the White House National Security Communications Advisor. So who else has come by for a visit? We've had a number of presidents join us. Future President uh, Teddy Roosevelt, who was then the Assistant Secretary of the Navy, lectured the college in 1897, and he returned as president to chair the Battleship Conference in 1908. President Franklin D. Roosevelt completed a drive-through inspection of the base and the college in 1940. President Dwight Eisenhower maintained an office here at the college and lived on campus for a period of time during the summers he spent in Newport in 1957 through 1960. President John Kennedy was married here in Newport in 1953, visited the college on a number of occasions during his presidency, and he is shown here with Alan Dulles in 1961. President Gerald Ford dined with Queen Elizabeth on the Royal Yacht Britannia moored at the Naval Station Newport Piers in July of 1976. Georgia Governor and later President Jimmy Carter visited the college to meet his former Naval Academy classmate, Vice Admiral Stansfield Turner, in 1973. And of course, happy birthday to uh, President Carter. President George H.W. Bush, known as Bush 41, was our graduation speaker in 2001. When we introduced him, he said his son was currently living in government quarters in Washington, D.C., and that's what he was. And his son, George W. Bush, known as Bush 43, lectured here in June of 2007. And finally, just a couple of quick events. In October 1916, the German submarine U-53 made a surprise visit to Newport Harbor. After its captain paid a call on Naval War College President Austin Knight and his crew went into town to buy some newspapers, they got underway and submerged off Nantucket. The next morning, they sank five enemy merchant ships based on the sailing information they'd gotten out of the newspapers. U.S. was neutral at the time. We couldn't do anything about the situation other than help rescue some of the survivors from those incidents. In 1924, the Navy Rigid Airship USS Shenandoah conducted the first experiments in mooring a flying airship to a converted fleet oiler USS Potoka here in Narragansett Bay. The students found it to be the largest visual aid ever used in war college history. In 1926, the USS Constellation offer, anchored off Coasters Harbor Island in full dress rig. And in 1976, in celebration of the American Bicentennial, more than 225 sailing ships from 30 nations participated in a parade of sail past the Naval War College. So, I hope these images reinforce the notion that this is a very special place, and men and women of consequence have contributed greatly to the Navy, the nation, and the world. So we've shared a quick overview of our history. It's a story worth telling. Anyone seeking more information can find a digital copy of Sailors and Scholars at these two locations, and uh, Dr. Hattendorf is working on a follow-up to Sailors and Scholars, which will be published later in the anniversary year. And I'd also direct your attention to a podcast that was recently published by the Center for Irregular Warfare and Armed Groups, CWAG, that featured Center Director Dave Brown in a conversation with John Hattendorf and senior faculty member John Maurer. It's about an hour and 25 minutes of fascinating history. And just last week, our talented and dedicated museum and archives professional unearthed a time capsule that had been buried a century ago during the college's 40th anniversary year. It serves as a physical link between us and our organizational ancestors from long ago. The capsule is still sealed, but it'll be opened in an appropriate ceremony later this year. You can take a look at the capsule, which is on display in the lobby, as well as viewing a number of historical documents as you enjoy your cake and beverages at the conclusion of the ceremony. I'm going to stop now. <laughs> Who's applauding? <laughs>
I now like to turn the podium over to a few of our distinguished visitors to offer their thoughts. First, the senior senator from the state of Rhode Island, a man who has tirelessly supported this college and me personally for more than 30 years. And of all the former Army Rangers I know, he is one of my favorites, Senator Jack Reed. Good afternoon. Uh, I want to thank Professor Jackson for the kind introduction, and uh, I'm proud to be ranked so high, sir. And uh, thank you for all your work in putting this event together. Uh, let me begin by recognizing Senator Whitehouse and Representative Amo, my colleagues in the United States Congress, and also Mayor Zai of the city of Newport. Let me also recognize uh, the president of the Naval Walk Rogers, Rear Admiral Walker, as well as all the former presidents of the hitter day. Gentlemen, thank you. You've given us impressive leadership over many, many years, a proud tradition, and again, I thank you. Also today are here are representatives of the Naval War College Foundation, the Chairman of the Board, Daniel Holland, and Chief Executive Officer George Lang. Thank you for the service you render to the War College. And finally, let me recognize the members of the Naval War College faculty, staff, and student body, especially Professor Hattendorf. Thank you, sir, for that impressive and eloquent presentation. And also the distinguished international fellows that are so much a part of the War College, along with the international students. As we all know, 140 years ago, on October 6, 1884, the United States Naval War College was founded here in Newport by Rear Admiral Stephen B. Luce. For almost a century and a half, it has played a critical role, not only in the advanced education of thousands of military officers and civilians, but also in the technological and operational developments that have made our country safer. One of the most impressive tributes to the Naval War College was rendered by one of its most distinguished graduates, Admiral Chester Nimitz. As he said, and I quote, I was asked once how we were able to fight the war in the Pacific. And I said that we fought it just as we fought it all on paper in the Naval War College. I fought the whole war of the Pacific when I was there in 1923 preparing the Navy and the nation to deter and, if necessary, defeat our challenges has been the mission of the Naval War College since its inception. The Naval War College teaches the lessons of history but is not lulled into accepting and repeating the status quo. Rather, it boldly and profoundly seeks to understand the dynamics of change through research and wargaming and the experience of those who today face the foe. This great tradition allowed a young Navy officer in 1923 to set the stage for an immortal moment on the decks of the USS Missouri in 1945. And it will do so for this generation and those generations that follow. But today, the challenges we are facing are even more daunting. Domains of warfare have expanded from land, sea, and air to include now space and cyber. Technological change proceeds at astounding speeds. AI and quantum computing offer great opportunities, but also very, very dangerous possibilities. Two great oceans no longer separate us from the problems, social, cultural, economic, and political of faraway places. And climate change is literally reshaping the world. But there is at least one constant, the dedicated faculty and students here at the Naval War College who apply the lessons of the past, the insights of the present, and a grasp of the future to forge a Navy that will defend our nation, our principles, and the principles of freedom-loving people everywhere. Throughout its long history, the Naval War College has worked to break the mold of traditional military strategy and thinking. Today, it continues to grow and evolve 
remaining a place of cutting edge research and technological advancement. And I know that the faculty, staff, and students will continue this tradition of excellence and innovation. Last month, I was proud to join Senator Whitehouse in submitting a statement in the congressional record on the floor of the Senate in recognition of this important milestone and the Naval War College's contributions to our armed forces throughout its 140 years. And I'm pleased to be able to join Senator Whitehouse in presenting it during today's event. I'd like to congratulate the entire Naval War College community on this anniversary. And with that, let me recognize and call up my colleague, Senator Whitehouse and Admiral Walker, so that we may present the citation. Thank you. Thank you, Jack. Uh, this actually makes quite a good occasion to uh, express my appreciation of the calm and steady and effective leadership of Chairman Reed in the Senate Armed Services Committee and the many contributions that he has made in that position to our nation's security and more parochially also to express my appreciation to him for the improvements that have been made both at the Naval War College and to Naval Station Newport as a result of his leadership of the Armed Services Committee and his role as a senior member of the Senate Appropriations Committee. It's nice to have ideas, it's nicer to have money. I also want to thank Admiral Walker for his leadership of this great institution, recognize his predecessors gathered here physically and I gather also uh, remotely, um, and recognize our terrific mayor, Sai Kam Savarovang, of the city of Newport. Um, we are here, obviously, out of respect for the past and to honor traditions that go back 140 years. But what makes the Naval War College important is not just the history and the tradition, but the way it attends to the future. And I want to express my appreciation for the way in which the Naval War College has addressed itself to the dangers of cybersecurity, to the dangers of climate security, and to the many security dangers that follow as democracy fails around the globe. Those are vitally important issues that will guide our nation's security in the decades ahead, and it is terrific that the Naval War College is at the forefront uh, of all three. Um, I'll close with, um, you know, obviously what the Naval War College does to train our officers is spectacular, uh, but I'll close with a story that illustrated to me the value of another aspect of what the Naval War College accomplishes, and that is its training of foreign students. As a new member of the Senate Intelligence Committee, I flew into Pakistan uh, to have a number of meetings, one with the Commander-in-Chief of the Pakistani military. It is famously said about uh, Pakistan that most countries have armies. Pakistan is an army that has a country, the uh, commander of the military there is a very powerful individual. The challenges that we had with the Pakistani military and with its intelligence service, the ISI, are, I think, legendary. But I know that the relationships that were built with that individual when he attended an American war college helped to abate those differences. When I came into his office after we shook hands, the first thing he did through a cloud of smoke, he was a chain smoker, was to walk me over to an old picture of his War College graduating class. And one by one, go through the faces of the young officers who he had learned with and tell me where they now were, either in our military, in other countries' military, or uh, retired, 
and um, did so with real affection. So it's impossible to predict how those relationships will come to America's advantage in the future. There's too much circumstance involved, but one thing we can certainly know is that it is immensely to America's advantage to forge those relationships in this terrific place. So here's to the next 140 years of the Naval War College, and I will now turn the podium over to the uh, exciting and talented newest member of Rhode Island's congressional delegation, the congressman from the first congressional district, Gabe Amo. Thank you so much, Senator Whitehouse. Uh, I certainly want to begin by acknowledging uh, our great uh, leadership in the congressional delegation. It is an honor that I get to serve uh, with people who are not only heroes to me, but are every day uh, executing uh, a vision on the biggest challenges that our world faces. So certainly uh, the leadership of Senator Reid, who's got that magical combination of being the Armed Services Chair and a senior appropriator, to uh, Senator Whitehouse and his leadership, who, that has always been focused laser focused on the future, all of the emerging threats that we face, whether uh, natural or by man. Uh, he is uh, laser focused on those challenges. And us being here today, uh, I recognize the leadership of the uh, Naval War College, both uh, present, uh, Rear Admiral Walker, and past. It is an honor to be here to celebrate something that's 140 years old. When you are 36, uh, that means a whole lot, uh, and for 140 years, uh, this campus, this uh, community of scholarship, of vision, has been serving uh, as a quintessential good neighbor uh, for the communities of Newport and uh, across Aquidneck Island. But we know uh, that the Naval War College has not only prepared officers for successful careers uh, in the Navy and beyond and strengthened our ties uh, to so many nations, uh, but it has helped grow uh, the community here. And you'll hear more of that, I'm certain, from our mayor. But in so many ways, if you'll excuse the pun, uh, the Naval War College has been anchored uh, in our community uh, since its very first days. And it's no secret that we currently face an uncertain and ever-changing world, one with threats that will test our ability to respond. Uh, we see evidence of that in the news every day, uh, and we are thankful for the leadership, the training, the preparation that comes from this great institution. Now, in my short time in Congress, I've served as a member of the Foreign Affairs Committee, where I've engaged with leaders from across the world who often uh, question uh, the ability for America to meet the moment. But when they see our military leadership, they know that we will stand the test of time. And this institution is evidence of that. And so I'm grateful to, to serve and grateful to be part of a team uh, that will continue uh, to work in great partnership uh, with the Naval War College for the next 140 years. And thanks for letting me uh, participate in your anniversary. And with that, it is uh, my pleasure to introduce a partner uh, to, uh, to the Naval War College as the host uh, community, uh, the mayor of the great city of Newport, uh, Mayor Zai. Congressman and I have been friends since kids, and uh, he still can't pronounce my last name, so <laughs> it's all good. So I say on behalf of the city of Newport, uh, it is a pleasure to be here to conduct due diligence on what is probably one of the best municipal real estate investments in U.S. history, that transfer of property. It is absolutely surreal to be up here, having actually sat and watched in that audience when President Bush came to visit here in 2007. 
And when you think about this community itself and the impact of the Navy, I cannot overstate the importance of all the work that Naval Station Newport and the U.S. Naval War College Foundation have. This has to be one of the most productive little laboratories of democracy in the country. This is the home of where religious independence came to be and was born into our Bill of Rights. This is where the women's suffrage movement got a lot of its initial momentum. And so it is only fitting that the US Navy would be one of the single most influential institutions dedicating its study of war to helping further peace in our world. The US Naval War College itself has served as the anchor to the Navy's presence here in Newport for over 140 years. And so if you will indulge me for a moment, I would like to read a proclamation from the city of Newport recognizing this momentous occasion. Whereas October 4th, 2024 marks the 140th anniversary of the founding of the U.S. Naval War College, the oldest such institution in the world. And whereas the Naval War College was established on Coasters Island in 1884 on property donated by the city of Newport to the United States Navy for the purpose of establishing a place of original research on all questions relating to war and statesmanship connected to war or the prevention of war, and whereas over the course of 14 decades, more than 50,000 students, including international officers from over 70 allied countries, have studied at the college in times of peace and in times of war, contributing directly to the security of their nations and the preservation of the virtues we all hold dear. And whereas generations of dedicated men and women comprising the students, faculty, and staff have been good neighbors and cherished residents of Quidnick Island and surrounding communities. And whereas the Naval War College personnel and their families strongly support our schools, our businesses, our youth athletic teams and cultural activities that make Newport a world-class city. And whereas the city of Newport looks forward to many more decades of friendship and cooperation, it is hereby resolved that I, Zai Kamsi Voravong, mayor of the city of Newport and the state of Rhode Island, do hereby proclaim the 4th of October, 2024 as Naval War College Day. Go Navy this evening. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, it's now my privilege to read several proclamations from our military leadership and uh, state, of or state of Rhode Island. From our Secretary of the Navy and Naval War College alumnus, the Honorable Carlos Del Toro, he sent an anniversary greeting to share as part of today's celebration. Happy birthday from the Secretary of the Navy. Admiral Walker and Naval War College faculty, staff, students, and alumni. As we celebrate the War College's 140th anniversary, I am filled with a profound sense of gratitude and admiration for the enduring legacy of this institution. For nearly a century and a half, the Naval War College has been a cornerstone of our nation's naval power, shaping the minds of generations of naval and other military leaders and contributing significantly to our national security. The commitment to intellectual rigor, strategic thinking, and the development of innovative naval doctrine has been instrumental in ensuring our maritime dominance. The War College has served as a crucible for the brightest minds in the Navy, providing them with the tools and knowledge necessary to navigate the complexities of the global maritime environment. I am particularly grateful for having had the opportunity to attend such a prestigious institution. My time at the Naval War College was a transformative experience that equipped me with the skills and knowledge I needed to succeed in my career as a Naval officer, as a small business owner, and now as Secretary of the Navy. As we look to the future, I am confident that the Naval War College will continue to be a driving force in shaping our nation's maritime strategy. The ability to anticipate emerging threats, adapt to new technologies, and foster a culture of innovation will be essential in ensuring our nation's security for generations to come. On behalf of the American people, I extend my warmest congratulations to the Naval War College on its 140th anniversary. I am positive the next century uh, will be filled with as much success and innovation as the previous 140 years. Fair winds and following seas. Sincerely, Carlos Del Toro. The Chief of Naval Operations and also Naval War College alumnus, Admiral Lisa Franchetti, was unable to be here today, but she too sent a letter of con congratulations that I would like to share with you. Congratulations on the Naval War College's 140th anniversary. Since its establishment on October 6, 1884, the Naval War College has provided unparalleled professional military education to generations of students from our Navy, across the Joint Force, the interagency, and international allies and partners. I am proud to count myself as among those graduates that have benefited from the world-class education provided in Newport at the Navy's home of thought. 
from the early days of Lusa Mahan, the Naval War College has served to meet the Navy's needs and adapt to the security environment of the time. Today, the formula for your educational success remains a timely and relevant curriculum, a dedicated and committed faculty and staff, and a cadre of ambitious and determined students. This combination, forged and refined through periods of peace and the crucible of war, has served our Navy and our nation exceptionally well for 14 decades. The college's influence extends well beyond the campus in Newport. Every day across the globe, Naval War College graduates are operating at the leading edge of our military in multiple domains from seabed to space. The college educates tomorrow's leaders through in-residence education, online courses, and in-fleet seminar programs nationwide. The college's wargaming and research efforts inform today's decision makers through innovative and timely analysis of fleet problems. At the same time, international graduates from the Naval Command Course and the Naval Staff Course proudly serve in their navies while strengthening the bond with ours. Today's security challenges may be more volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous than when the Naval War College was founded, but the excellence of the college and its value to our Navy is unchanged. Again, congratulations. I am certain the next 140 years will be equally exceptional. Bravo Zulu, L.M. Franchetti, Admiral, U.S. Navy. Finally, uh, I would like to read a proclamation from Rhode Island District 12's Senator Louis De Palma. Whereas the United States Naval War College, whose motto is victory through sea power, was established October 6, 1884 on Coasters Harbor Island in Newport, Rhode Island. From its beginning, the Naval War College conducted complex maritime war games and served as a laboratory for the analysis and critique of Navy and Army war plans. Many of the most significant naval warfighting concepts of the 20th century were examined and refined on the game floors of the Naval War College. Whereas for the past 140 years, the Naval War College has been a vital asset to the United States and the, the free world. Naval War College graduates have contributed significantly to the security of our nation and its allies in both war and in peace, and have earned the respect and trust of allied leaders and military figures across the globe. The military strength of the United States and her allies has served as a strong deterrent to our enemies and all who may wish them harm. Now, therefore, be it resolved that we are gathered hereby to joyously celebrate the 140th anniversary of the founding of the United States Naval War College. On behalf of the citizens of the great state of Rhode Island and Providence Plantations, we gratefully thank them for all the good work they do to preserve and safeguard our precious liberties and freedoms here at home and all they do to promote and protect democracy across the globe. Given this sixth day, correction, well, wow, fourth day of October, the sixth is the actual anniversary, given this fourth day of October, 2024, Senator Louis De Palma. Thank you. I would now like to ask Admiral Walker to return to the stage to provide his remarks. Well, again, thank you all uh, for coming. And, and as I stated early, it's a true honor. And as I was sitting down there as the uh, chief of staff was reading uh, the letters and, and the proclamations that we got from the mayor, uh, along with uh, uh, Senator Reed and Senator Whitehouse, I thought to myself, like in 140 plus years from now, so about 280 or whatever, if you look at uh, even a decade from now, excuse me, a century from now, um, someone else is gonna be seeing the paperwork and uh, through the archives. So it's, it's great that you all are here and I truly appreciate it. As I stated earlier, our critical friends uh, and partners from the local, state, and federal officials being here are truly leaders to us. I think of it as three ships. You know, friendships, partnerships, and relationships. And the last two truly matter. But often, uh, George tells me it's about leadership. So I really, truly thank the four of you gentlemen for being here, and it's your leadership in the local community, in the state, and in the federal government that we truly appreciate each and every day as US citizens. So thank you for that effort there. I've acknowledged our CNO uh, distinguished fellows, but I'd also like to publicly acknowledge Admiral Barrera and his wife, Anna Marie, for 13 years of service to the Naval War College on your pending retirement, sir. Thank you. <laughs> so 
So I am so pleased to be able uh, to share this event with some of my predecessors, both in person and virtually on Zoom. Vice Admiral John Christensen, as the 53rd president of the college, you stimulated the War College innovation, broke new ground in naval leadership, leader education, expanded international outreach, and increased support to Navy operational training levels. We are so happy to have you and Teresa back here at the Naval War College. Rear Admiral Jeff Harley, during your tenure as the 56th president, you were laser focused on international engagements and was manifested in the establishment of the International Maritime Staff Officer course and in the degree granting International Masters of Art program. While Cindy was not able to attend today, we look forward to her coming back with you in the near future, sir. Vice Admiral Shoshana Show Chadfield, our 57th and, and president that holds a, doc, a doctorate degree. We are so thankful that you are here virtually, straddling the oceans and time zones to be with us on this auspicious occasion. During your very COVID-challenged tenure, you oversaw the successful transfer of the college education and research programs to virtual and hybrid formats. Such, and your such foresight and leadership that the college received the meritorious unit citation. We hope you and David are enjoying the benefits of living and working in NATO, with our NATO allies in Europe. And as I stated earlier, our Navy's newest and finest Vice Admiral, Pete Garvin, we are so pleased that you are back in town. You only left a few short weeks ago, and now you're on the verge of assuming the president of the National Defense University. The Navy War College looks forward to working partnership with you and your team hand in hand. While your tenure at the college was brief, your accomplishments were many. Most significant were the long lasting and maybe the creation of the new course, Perspectives on Modern War. By integrating the core content with the uh, symposium and lecture series materials, students will be able to apply critical analysis to the leadership challenges of modern warfare honing their abilities and critical thinking, assessment, and strategic planning. We have already hosted the Chief of Naval Operations during her NAVPLAN rollout, and our students provided her direct feedback. It's that feedback that we will give to each and every guest speaker that comes. And Cheryl, welcome back to Equidnant Island. I'm sure you don't wanna go back down to DC. <laughs> so collectively, much of what the college is and does is direct result of your distinguished efforts over the past years. And Laura and I look forward to continuing this incredible ride. Professor Emeritus John Hattendorf and Master of Ceremony John Jackson, which none of this would have been possible with the uh, efforts of the, the two men leading this. Just a superb job, but a bit of history that has been made on the Legion of Alum. Faculty, staff, friends, and advocates of this unique institution. Over the next uh, few minutes, I'll provide, I'll provide you with some context and reflections from the perspective of a graduate who witnessed this firsthand, the transformation of powers of the college. And as a fortunate maritime warrior at the helm of this national treasure, at this critical time in existence that you heard. Let's take a brief look at the past, the present, and the future of the Navy's flagship educational and research entity, which has been firmly anchored in New England's bedrock along the shores of the Narragansett Bay for the past 14 decades. The college's history spans from an era aging steam-powered ships that still carried full sail rigs to modern, sophisticated, world-arranging nuclear-powered vessels. Sailors have transitioned from smooth board cannons to emerging hypersonic uh, velocity weapons. Technology is certainly interesting and captiv captivating, but it is, a true, it, it is as true today as it was close to 19, in the close, close of the 19th century. The seeds of victory are found in the minds of brave men and women who wear the cloth of their nation in defense of all we hold dear. On the cusp of the 20th century in 1894, 
the college welcomed its first international students with the two officers from the Royal Swedish Navy who began their studies. The number of allies and students' bodies expanded significantly with the Navy Command Course, which was established in 1956. And the Navy Staff Course College stood up in 1972. Today, over 180 students this year from 83 different nations add their unique perspectives to all we do in the classroom, research offices, and game floors. In the 19th, 20th, and 21st centuries, with the U.S. students and our allies, some fundamental truths remain. I am reminded that the words displayed in bronze letters in the nearby Turner Passageway leading to the older portions of the college. Quote, since wars begin in the minds of men, it's in the minds of men that defense of peace must be constructed. Avoiding or preventing war is always a preferable method. And defending peace has always been America's go uh, going in position. Credible deterrence, however, demand both military strength and political will. Potentially, opponents must firmly believe that our nation has the capability and the willingness to fight and win in a conflict whenever necessary. This foundation's concept underpins much of the college's efforts across the education, research, and engagement activities. Luce, Mahan, Sims, and the other founders, whose name we utter in the most reverential uh, whispers, established the Naval War College as a place of original research on all things relating to the war and statesmanship connected to war or the prevention of war. As a young officer in a class of 2002, I immer immersed myself in such research with a renewed sense of urgency and emphasis added by the hor horrifying attacks of 9-11. Looking back, I believe I entered the War College as a hot shot naval aviator, but I graduated as a critical thinker and joint warfighter. A pretty good return on your investment, I would say, after 10 months. More importantly, I told others how critical this place was to their career. Upon graduation, I joined the long line of more than 50,000 alumni who helped shape the Navy, the Joint Force, in times of peace and in times of war. These alumni are the true legacy of the past 140 years. Shifting our focus to today's college, we acknowledge its mission to educate tomorrow's leaders, inform decision makers, and engage allies and partners on all matters of naval power in order to preserve peace, respond in crisis, and win decisively in war. The tireless labor and boundless energy of every member of the Naval War College family are dedicated to supporting this mission. As I stated, the Chief of Naval Operations recently came here to br bring out her navigational plan of America's warfighting Navy that calls for the organization and mental flexibility. She noted that, quote, agility comes from good thinking done in advance and there's no time to waste, end quote. She has the clock, it's ticking, in her office, 819 days until 2027, game time. I truly believe that much of the good things our Navy needs in the years ahead will come from our enlightened, enlightened alumni working together at every level around the globe with clear purpose and an immediate sense of urgency. I've highlighted sub, much of our educational programs which happens, to, uh, which happens both in residence or via distant education around the world. But we also inform today's decision makings in a, ver a variety of ways our research institutes, wargaming efforts, and advanced and assistant teams critically keeping the warfighters of today aware of the key security issues that face today and likely face into, in the future. Our professors and staff are routinely found on Capitol Hill in senior leader briefs on maritime operations centers doing their part to keep America's Navy educated, 
informed, and ready to fight and win. So the college we celebrate today will be for decades to come, be critically crucial for both long-term and short-term professional development, and dedicated to the men and women who constitute its unwavering shield to this nation. Since 1884, this institution championed the study, the study of preventing, fighting, and decisively winning wars. While the face of the college has changed over the last 140 years, our focus has not. We cannot rest just on our reputation of the Naval War College alone, but continue to work to ensure that the value of this glorious institution is now and in the future. Buildings come down and new ones may go up in their place, but we will always continue to produce strategically minded leaders, cutting edge researchers, and relationship building professionals who are prepared to meet whatever is next challenge in the next 140 years that, may, may, that it may bring. So again, happy anniversary to the Naval War College. The future is ours to build, sustain, and enjoy. Thank you all. Thank you, Admiral, for your thoughts on this special occasion. We are indeed fortunate to have in our corner a group of patriotic citizens and corporate supporters who comprise the Naval War College Foundation, and they are the co-sponsors of this celebration. Looking around the college, you will see the foundation's fingerprints on a tremendous number of events, activities, and initiatives that help make the college the world-class institution that it is. They've been at our side, providing unwavering support for more than a half century. I'd like to call Chief Executive Officer Captain George Lang to the podium to make a presentation and announcement. Thank you, John. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, uh, good afternoon. What a, what a real treat it is to be here today. Uh, on behalf of Chairman Holland, who is, uh, who is with us, uh, and the Naval War College Foundation Board of Trustees, our staff, members, sponsors, and friends, congratulations uh, on, the anniversary, on this anniversary milestone. And thank you for your continued service, leadership, and expertise that you share so generously with our valued members of our joint and combined force, uh, uh, joint, I'm sorry, uh, military and civilian combined and joint force teams. As the Naval War College Foundation approaches its 55th anniversary next month, you should know that it gives us no better joy than to raise and provide to this great institution the resources it requires to sustain it as America's premier institution for professional military education. You all can be justifiably proud of your accomplishments and the value you provide to the national security of our great country and that of our allies and partners. Well done. That said, it gives me great pleasure to present to Rear Admiral Walker, the 59th president of the U.S. Naval War College, this commemorative challenge coin honoring the 140th anniversary of the college's founding. Admiral, if you would join me on stage, and Chairman Holland, if you would please join me on stage. I don't want to see that on eBay, sir. Yeah. <laughs> uh, congrat congratulations, Admiral, uh, and to your senior leadership team and all members of your faculty and staff, and thank you uh, for your uh, dedicated leadership and continued service to our great Navy and nation. Additionally, at this time, my staff uh, will present a similar commemorative challenge coins to Senator Reed, Senator Whitehouse, uh, Representative Amo, uh, Mayor Sy, uh, and then the college's distinguished uh, CNO Fellows, Admirals Barrera, Verma, and Admiral Sanez, and of course, Provost Mariano, uh, and our three uh, former PNWCs, uh, Admirals Christensen, Admirals Harley, and Admiral Garvin.
We're going to have, we'll have two other additional uh, um, presentations. One to uh, Chairman Dan Holland. We'll get his uh, uh, prize. We, I kept it a secret. Uh, Dan didn't really show anybody other than maybe the staff. And of course, uh, Chairman Emeritus, Major General Steve Sider, who's with us. Sir, always a pleasure to see you in the audience. And then to all of those, uh, thank you for your incredible support of this exceptional institution uh, that is charged with informing today's decision makers and educating tomorrow's leaders. And finally, I'm proud to announce that over the, the next week or two, uh, all faculty and staff will receive this commemorative challenge coin uh, as a gift from the Naval War College Foundation. <clears throat> And additional replicas will be made available here in the next couple of weeks. Um, we're going to get, we're going to distribute the uh, commemorative coins first, but additional replicas will be available in our museum store, and you're certainly welcome to as buy as many as you would like. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> and then again, on behalf of the Naval War College Foundation, congratulations again uh, for being such an integral part of uh, uh, in playing our in preserving our national security. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'd like to thank our graphics department and uh, the Naval War College Foundation for creating what I think is one of the most beautiful coins I've ever seen. So uh, uh, you'll all be getting yours eventually. So, uh, okay, at this point, it's a Navy tradition to cut a ceremonial cake at anniversaries and other celebrations. And we're now gonna try to execute the most elaborate cake cutting ceremony in the history of the college and maybe of the Navy, featuring 10 cake cutters, two swords, and an enlisted cutlass. I, uh, what we're trying to do is have on the stage here the key elements that make the War College work. So I'd like to ask to come forward, please, Admiral Walker, past presidents Christensen, Garvin, and Harvey, Dr. Charles Chadbourne, the college's longest serving faculty member. Senior Chief Hackett representing, come on up please, representing our uh, enlisted contingent. YN1 Tamar Reed, our Senior Sailor of the Year. Foundation leaders Holland and Lang. And Mr. Steve Malvey representing our talented and dedicated staff. Okay. I have a chart. All right. Oh, yeah. Oh, geez. <laughs> okay. Steve Malvey on the end, please. Followed by Petty Officer Reed. Senior Chief Hackett. Admiral Christensen. Admiral Walker. Admiral Garris. Admiral Hart. Mr. Holland. Mr. Lang. Please. Sword one. Sword two. Wipe them off before you put them back in the scabbard. <laughs> <laughs> it's really where we coming. I think if we get maybe each of you come in and all of you kind of bunch in together, yeah, yeah, yeah. you three yeah. share that. There we go. There you go. Make sure you look at Chris. Look at Chris. Look at Chris. Nicely done, nicely done. Are we all complete here? For us, we we're here at this point. We've got one more thing to do, then we're done. <laughs> nicely, nicely done there, team. Uh, as many of you know, the uh, a rain delay several weeks ago caused us to postpone the seventh annual Cardines Classic Army-Navy baseball game. Uh, it will be held this afternoon at 1700 at Cardines Field. I'd like to introduce Coach Michael Murray and Coach James Elrod for a few remarks. Good 
Good afternoon. I'm Lieutenant Commander Michael Murray. I am a coach representing Team Navy. Major James Elrod, United States Marine, playing for Team Army, beat Navy. So I won't pretend that I'm a naval historian and butcher the reasoning for this game, but I will simply say that baseball diplomacy has been a tradition in the Navy and in the sense of Newport, Rhode Island, it's an opportunity for us to interact with the community and show them that we're all humans and we have the same interests as them. The community has been very supportive of this game. We even have two uh, civilian coaches who you will see in uniform. Uh, I think both of them are playing base coach roles. So we are truly grateful to them, the time that they've invested in us, the goals, Cardines Field, and an assortment of other people who have really been fantastic to include the foundation for providing us with equipment. This game also highlights the role that the Naval War College plays in this community. We got the opportunity to scrimmage some of the young high school uh, kids out there. Um, and it also inspired them to say, hey, what are they gonna do after uh, high school? And some of them are intent to or pursuing uh, serving their country in some sort of capacity, if it's the military or something else. So it's been good for us to be ambassadors for the, the Naval War College as well. Thank you. There we go. Hope to see you out there, play ball. Okay, at five o'clock, we're gonna have first pitches thrown out by lots of different admirals and other folks and whatnot, and we will be presenting the uh, Naval War College 140th anniversary prize package. <laughs> Includes all kinds of exciting stuff we'll be drawing, so when you come into the ball field, make sure you get your ticket, and we'll be drawn for a prize. So, can we get a better deal than that? I don't think so, so thank you guys very much. Well, this concludes our anniversary celebration. Thanks for your participation. We invite you to join us in the lobby for cake and beverages and conversation. Happy anniversary, and we'll see you here for the 150th in 2034. Thank you.